In a previous video, we looked at the biblical book of Revelation, which cites ancient Egyptian texts in Revelation 20 verse 4, where it says the second death will have no power over those who have part in the first resurrection. And in verse 14, where it says the second death is the lake of fire. Both the second death and the lake of fire are mentioned in the ancient Egyptian coffin texts and the book of the coming forth by day. In this video, we're going to look at the actual book of the coming forth by day as it's found on the sacred text website. The book of the coming forth by day is more commonly known as the book of the dead. It's been dated to around 1550 to 50 BC in Egypt. However, the book itself is a compilation of much earlier texts in ancient Egypt. It's a compilation of the earlier pyramid texts, which date to between 2400 and 2300 BC, and the coffin texts, which date to between 2181 and 2055 BC. In contrast, the earliest biblical texts are dated from 745 to 586 BC, and the book of Revelation itself is dated to 81 to 96 CE. So as we're looking at this, keep in mind that the Egyptian texts are not referencing the Bible. The Bible is referencing the far more ancient Egyptian texts. And since Revelation is pointing us to the Egyptian writings, I think it's fair to say that we're meant to study it as it pertains to the end times prophecy in Revelation. In this video, we'll look at a translation of the Egyptian Book of the Dead published by E.A. Wallace Budge in 1895. But instead of going through Budge's interpretations, we're going to look at the actual translations, starting with Plate 1 and focus on the connections to Bible prophecy. The first thing I notice on Plate 1, number 2, is that it says, The beings who minister unto Osiris cherish him as the king of the north and of the south, the beloved man-child. The kings of the north and south are a very important clue in biblical end times prophecy and are found in Daniel chapter 11. So the king of the north and the king of the south originate in the ancient Egyptian text and it says Osiris is both of them. In addition, it says Ra is the Lord of the world. The Bible says Jesus is the Lord, mainly in the writings of Paul, Acts 2.36, Romans 6.23, 1 Corinthians 1.2, Galatians 6.14, Philippians 2.11. So, ancient Egyptian religion says Ra is the Lord, and Paul wrote thousands of years later that Jesus is Lord. In the Book of the Dead, Part 4, it says Ra is the mighty man-child, the king of the earth, and the king of the gods. Revelation 12.5 indicates that the man-child is a celestial object, but Revelation 12.13 makes clear that the man-child also represents someone living on the earth. Verse 5 gives us a clue and says that the man-child is the one who will rule with a rod of iron. Revelation 2, 26 and 27 explain that it is the overcomers that will rule with a rod of iron. And in Revelation 19, 11 through 15, it says the one who will rule with a rod of iron is faithful and true. Therefore, the man-child in the biblical text represents faithful and true and the overcomers. In the Book of the Dead, Plate 2, it says that Osiris is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Prince of Princes. In Revelation 17, 14, it says the Lamb is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and John 1, 36 tells us the Lamb is Jesus. Revelation 19, 16 says faithful and true is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the ancient Egyptian book tells us Osiris is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Bible tells us that Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Plates 5 and 6, it says Osiris has come from the pool of fire, and it speaks about the holy habitation, and says, May my Father establish for me my mansion in the place above this earth, where there are wheat and barley in abundance which cannot be told. May feasts be made for me there. And this is referenced in John 14, 2, where Jesus says, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And this connects to Revelation 12, 6 and 12, 14, where it says the woman will be nourished or fed in a place prepared by God. And also in Revelation 7, 9 through 17, which says the multitude of all tribes will be fed by the Lamb at the throne in heaven. 
So the ancient Egyptian texts say there is a mansion in a holy habitation above the earth that the Father has established, where there is abundant food and feasts. And just prior to the mention of the holy habitation in the place above earth, the Egyptian texts say, Deliver you me from the crocodile, which is in the place of the lords of right and true. The Bible tells us there are many mansions in the Father's house and that a multitude of all tribes on the earth will be taken to the throne in heaven where they will be fed by the Lamb. They are also represented as the woman who will escape the serpent in Revelation 12:14. And this, as we've discussed in other videos, is the flight to the holy city in heaven. It's also referenced in Luke 17:37, where it says there are those who will be taken to the place where the eagles gather and this is the gathering in heaven in Matthew 24, 31. It is the multitude which no man can number standing before the throne in heaven in Revelation 7, and it is the multitude which is not measured walking the holy city in Revelation 11, and that holy city, Revelation 21, 2 tells us, is in heaven. The Egyptian texts are saying the same thing, deliver you me from the crocodile the woman escaping from the serpent. The Father establishes a mansion in the holy habitation above earth. The holy habitation has feasts and abundant wheat and barley. Jesus says in the Father's house there are many mansions, and he goes there to prepare a place for us. This is speaking of the deliverance of the multitude from the serpent. The woman in Revelation 12:14 escapes from the serpent for a time, times, and half a time to the place prepared by God. The woman in this verse represents the multitude of all tribes in Revelation 7 who will be fed by the Lamb at the throne in heaven. Next, on plates 7 through 10, we see the horns of the bull with the circular object between them again, only this time it's not on the head of Isis, but on the head of the bull. And this is confirmation that it is referencing the constellation Taurus, a celestial body between the horns of Taurus. And then I found this interesting. It says, I am yesterday, I know tomorrow. Yesterday is Osiris, and tomorrow is Ra. On the day when he shall destroy the enemies of Nebuchadnezzar, and when he shall establish as prince and ruler his son Horus, on the day when we commemorate the festival of the meeting of the dead Osiris with his father Ra, when the battle of the gods was fought. And then notice it adds next, I am the keeper of the volume of the book of things which are and of things which shall be. So the day of the battle in Revelation is the battle of Armageddon in Revelation 16, 14 and 20 verse 8, which says the devils go forth to the kings of the earth to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. This occurs when the asteroid hits the earth, as explained in the Revelation timeline, and this is clearly a future event, not a past event, as is evident in Revelation's connection to the book of Daniel, which are clear about when the timeline starts and what transpires leading up to the end. Many of those things having already occurred exactly according to the prophecies. And in the Egyptian text, it's essentially saying that these writings are prophecies. Egyptian scholars would have us believe that it's all silly notions about the afterlife, but it clearly says it's about the future. I am yesterday, I know tomorrow. I am the keeper of the book of things which are, and of things which shall be. This is absolutely clear that the Egyptian texts are prophecies about the future. And notice what it says next, millions of years, the traverser of millions of years. So whether this is an accurate translation of the number millions, or whether it actually means thousands, it's making clear that it's talking not just about the future, but about the far future. At least thousands of years, maybe millions. It is the purification of Osiris on the day of his birth. This purification is talked about in other translations. For example, the Albert Slossman translation of a portion of the Book of the Dead says, Life began again after that, under the course of the new sun. Thus, the survivors of the catastrophe coming from heaven are purified in order to accomplish the orders originally passed on by Osiris. This quote came from Patrick Gerald's book because I can't find an English translation of Slossman's book. But the point is, this purification of survivors after a catastrophe and coming down from heaven after that is explained also in the Bible. 
The Bible says the multitude will be taken out of the tribulation and stand before the throne in heaven, Revelation 7. They will stay in heaven for three and a half years, Revelation 12. Then they come back down to earth, Revelation 21. The purification is mentioned in Revelation 7.14, which says their robes have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. So again, another connection to Osiris. The Lamb purifies. The Lamb is the King of Kings. Osiris purifies. Osiris is the King of Kings. Then it says, O you lords of right and truth, and you holy ones who stand behind Osiris, who utterly do away with sins and crime. Destroy you all the faults which are within me, even as you did for the seven shining ones. The seven shining ones are also referenced in the book of Revelation as the seven stars. We talked about this in another video. The seven stars are the Pleiades star system. This is made clear in Amos 5.8, Job 9.9, and Job 38.31. The faults of these seven stars are explained in detail in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Remember, Revelation 1.20 says stars are angels, which means angels are stars. Then the Egyptian book talks about the night of the reckoning of destruction, and it says this is the night of the burning of the damned and the overthrow of the wicked. And this is referenced in the Bible as the burning of the earth at the asteroid impact in 2 Peter 3.10, Revelation 8.10, and Revelation 18.8 and 21. We talked in another video about the damned being those who will die the second death and how Jude seems to refer to the angels of the seven stars saying some of them will die twice because they are impersonating dead people. The asteroid impact causes the lake of fire on the earth, which is the second death for the Pleiadians who are impersonating dead people. It's not an imaginary place the Egyptians made up. It's a future asteroid impact. Then it says, Deliver me from the watchers who bear slaughtering knives, who slay those who are in the following of Osiris. These watchers are also mentioned in the prophecies of Jeremiah 4, verse 16, and Daniel 4, 17. It's not clear who they are, but Jeremiah says they come from a far country. The far country is clarified in Isaiah 13, 5 to be a place at the end of heaven. So these watchers are essentially aliens. The Egyptian texts say they have slaughtering knives. And then it says, Deliver me from the God whose face is like unto that of a dog, who feeds upon the dead, who watches at the bite of the fiery lake, and who devours the bodies of the dead and swallows hearts, and who shoots forth filth, but he himself remains unseen devourer for millions of years. So these watchers come from a far country at the end of heaven. They have faces like dogs. They watch at the lake of fire. They eat the dead and swallow their hearts, but remain unseen. And this sounds a lot like the vampires of the Bible that we looked at recently, the horse leech of Proverbs 30:15, that it says is a vampire-like demon who has teeth like swords also known as the locusts in Revelation 9. And this also confirms that they come out after the asteroid impact. They watch at the lake of fire. And this is Lilith, the night demon of Belial, which was made for the pit, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So again, the asteroid impact. So all over the place in the ancient texts, the Egyptians, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Bible we're told that in the future, an asteroid will hit the earth and these vampire creatures will be feeding on the dead. The Egyptian texts add to this that their faces look like dogs and they are invisible. And that relates to the image in Revelation 13, which we've also talked about in other videos. So that was plates 1 through 10 of the ancient Egyptian book of the coming forth by day. For more information about the fulfillments of ancient biblical prophecy, please see the playlist linked here. Thank you to those who make this work possible. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please consider providing support using the link below. I can't do this without your help. I hope you're doing well, and I will talk to you later.